your synthesis. I've set up some things in advance so you don't have to watch me set those up. I have a heater stirrer set on a lab jack that is already up so that I can lower it later. I have an oil bath with a large paper clip for a stirrer. The stirring is already on. The heat is set at 60 degrees. I have a thermometer that goes to 200 degrees held with a thermometer clamp and I have my condenser clamped above the oil bath. The in tube is at the bottom. It is going to the faucet. The out tube is going to the drain and I've already checked for leaks. I have already weighed a conical vial with a magnetic spin vane inside. Together the vial and the spin vane weigh 25.6779 grams. So I did that off camera. The first reagent we're going to add is paracresol. Paracresol is a sensitizer and an irritant, so I'm working with it in the hood. I'm going to measure out 160 microliters using an automatic pipette, and I'm going to add it to the vial. I'm going to keep the hood low because this stuff is really not something I want to breathe or smell. Maybe a different bottle. 
heat up. And when the heat on this thermometer reaches between 110 and 115, I should see the water in my reaction boil. And that's when I will start the reaction time of 45 to 60 minutes. line about 
about a centimeter, maybe a little more from the bottom. I'm going to take my TLC spotter with a pair of cresol in it, and I'm going to spot it under the UV lamp that is on. I'm going to spot several small times. I can already see there's a UV visible dot developing as I spot, so I know that I will be able to see the spot once the TLC is run. Paracresol is UV active because it has an aromatic ring, so we don't have to worry about staining it with something like potassium permanganate. Now I'm going to take my reaction solution and do the same thing. This is probably going to be a lot more dilute, which is why I'm spotting it underneath the light so I can make sure that I'm going to have something to see. So I've spotted it several times. I can see underneath the light that there are spots for each of those. If you want to be thorough, you can add what's called a cross spot. So I'm going to spot both solutions on top of each other. So a little bit of the cresol and a little bit of the reaction mixture. careful not to touch the surface of the plate. I'm going to use forceps to just drop it into the chamber and allow it to run for a few minutes. The TLC has finished running, so I'm going to retrieve it from the chamber. Let it dry. Ah. <laughs> Draw a line where the solvent was. And then I'm going to look at it under the UV lamp and circle my spots. I can see there's a very low spot for the paracresol. That's because that's an alcohol. I can see there's a spot that's much higher on the plate where my reaction lane is. And then in the cross spot, I can see both of these spots. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the RFs. I'm going to measure them in centimeters and I no longer need my light, so I'm gonna turn it off. So measuring from the starting line to the solvent finish line, that looks like about 2.8 centimeters. And if I'm measuring from the starting line to the middle of the cresol spot, that's about 0.5 centimeters. And from the starting line to the middle of what I hope is my product spot is about 1.7 centimeters. like to see the TLC. This is what it looks like. From the TLC we can see that the reaction has finished. So even though it hasn't been 60 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat and lower the oil bath and allow the reaction to cool.